we're recording. Here we go. Let me just, oh, hold on. I need to zoom out. No, zoom out the other way. There we go. Zooming out. Hey, welcome back, everyone. Toysh is here, and I am back yet again for yet another Marvel Legends video today. Very stoked. We're going to be checking out X-Men 97 Wave 2. And not only that, it is the premiere date for the return of X-Men, the animated series, now labeled as X-Men 97. So we got six new figures to check out. However, I, I thought it would warrant my old VHS camera taking a look, 1990s style, at some old Toy Biz figures. Mutant Agenda, right? Mutant's Revenge. It's pretty much what got me into X-Men, the animated series. Just saying, we got some old Toy Biz, we got some new Marvel Legends, and then you know what this is, that old VHS tape right there. But I gotta say, even back in the day, X-Men the Animated Series, when it first premiered, it was one of those cartoons where it was a little bit too over my head adult. And for being around six, probably five, six, something like that, it really wasn't until they debuted on season two of Spider-Man the Animated Series where I finally went... Oh, it's it's all connected. It is one large show, an individual range. And that was pretty cool. So then, from that point, I decided to get into X-Men the Animated Series because that blew my mind when I saw all those X-Men characters teaming up with Spider-Man. That was just the coolest thing ever. And from that point on, X-Men the Animated Series... Spider-Man the Animated Series, Fantastic Four, Hulk, Iron Man, they were over on UPN, but they kind of sort of coincided. It's a bit of a mess, that old animated MCU, but for the most part, they did a pretty good job. But now, to see X-Men the Animated Series continue, and I've heard really good things from a lot of people I would definitely trust their opinions, so yeah, for that alone, I'm stoked. And just fingers crossed, it's a good continuation, that's all I'm looking for I just want to see some good old-fashioned X-Men. I'll be honest with you. It's been a while, like a lot of years, to to finally get to this point to see X-Men doing X-Men things. The X-Men movies, <laughs> not so much. But regardless, uh, we got some new figures to check out. With Magneto in his fancy-dancy M costume, which I'm going to be honest with you... <laughs> Figure? Fine, for whatever it is, but I need to see some context here before I really go, oh yeah, baby, that was the right choice. So you got a couple extra heads, you got the big old M right there. On the back side of the packaging, you can see all the different figures, six of them, which, not too shabby, but there's no Build-A-Figure pieces for those wondering. The big draw for me, though, for this second round, are new characters, obviously, because for the most part, we are getting... Redos, rehashes, they have a little bit of an animated continuity to them. But this guy, the Executioner, who hasn't been a figure for quite some time, since the days of Toy Biz, to be honest with you, but he still looks awesome. It does say FOH, Friends of Humanity. I'm very curious to see what this guy's role will be on the show, so definitely looking forward to that. But in the meantime, we got a really cool-looking figure. Now, Kurt... Wagner, he makes a return. This is not my first Nightcrawler. Probably won't be my last Nightcrawler. But I got to say, it could have used a little, a little more sprucing up in the box. Sure, the head portraits are great. Artwork, again, he is in the show. Curious to see what he does, how it turns out. So, Nightcrawler, ladies and gentlemen. Jean Grey, by all accounts, it's been a long time coming to get... Uh, let's say, an actual X-Men the Animated Series, Jean Grey. This one looks to do a pretty bang-up job. Back in the day, with Toy Biz, you really had to piecemeal everything. You didn't really get that great of a Jean Grey. Let's just be honest. This one, after all these years, setting all the X-Men up in Marvel Legends style, she looks pretty cool. So, very stoked to have Jean Grey. Or, is this Jean Grey? Huh? I don't know. But I'm sure in the show we will find out. This is the Goblin Queen, Madeline Pryor. She comes with a baby. Will that be Cable? Will it be a different Summers? 
Who knows? He's got little X markings all over the blanket. That's a nice touch. <laughs> but yes, the Goblin Queen, Madeline Pryor, I'm sure we'll see a little sinister action in there somehow, some way. So definitely looking forward to see how she plays as a villain in this new show, which then leaves us with Cyclops. And Cyclops himself, as I've been asking the Marvel Legends peoples for so long now, if you're going to do... X-Men, People with Powers, Spider-Man. You, you gotta have the powers in the box. Not only do you get two head portraits, you do get an optic blast of the Ruby Quartz vision, whatever you call that. So, that's cool. I definitely like how that will go in. He's kind of got that Jean kind of head going on. <laughs> this is gonna be fun. You hear the excitement in my voice. This should be... An absolute blast. And again, like I said, for however the show turns out, for whatever happens, second season, third season, fifth season, if we ever get a Spider-Man the Animated Series revival, which in all honesty, kind of hoping we don't unless John Sipper Jr. takes on the reins and really makes it his show. I think that that's the only way that it would really work. But like I said, six new figures. And we got some oldies and some goodies to look at too. So sit back, relax. Grab yourself a nice hot cup of coffee. This is a look at the brand new Hasbro Marvel Legends X-Men 97 Wave 2. Here we go. And while I got all you children of the 90s Adams here, I just want to say thanks so much for always checking out my YouTube vids. And if you haven't already, please do consider subscribing. Old toys, new toys, daily news updates, hot dang, do these X-Men look good all together. Now, before we get started, as everything is now taken out of the packaging, I will tell you to remove said nostalgia goggles. We will be looking at these in terms of a collective purpose. Do they fit the needs of what you see for X-Men 97? And I will tell you this, they are very good figures if you've never collected Marvel Legends and you want X-Men characters. I have a problem with some of them in the sense of what are we looking at here? If no one knew what the X-Men were, like a lot of kids these days, a lot of us adults out there, we could tell you and talk to you all day about the X-Men. But the main gripe that I have is where are the powers? Now that doesn't apply to every figure, but certainly with the character of Magneto, which we'll just say in terms of the context as I don't know why he's wearing this costume just yet outside of comic book lore X-Men animated series X-Men 97 we'll soon see but I primarily got this figure to see if this would work in the head swappage and yes I'm happy to say that you can put this unmasked Magneto head on the wave one X-Men 97 body so I'm happy there you go but in terms of the figure if that wasn't your plan the figure itself perhaps is a little bit too skinny and maybe big headed, right? So when you look at the two head portraits, he does have a lot of hair that probably adds to the gravitas of it all. But the cape itself, the costume, the very simplicity of it is very animated looking. He has plenty of articulation. It's all pinless. If you're a stickler for articulation, you will be happy. It's that usual Marvel Legends lore with extra hands, outstretched hands, but there are no powers. So if I were to ask you, you know nothing about the X-Men. I say, here's Magneto. What's his powers? You'd probably look at me and go, I, 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 does he control something with an M? Yes, magnetism. But unless you have a flight stand or powers or something like that to really bring this character to life, it's kind of a dud through and through. Now, like I said, once we watch X-Men, the animated series, X-Men 97, and to get a better idea of who, what, where, when, and why for this Magneto, it may fare better. Also, be very easy with the knees. I will just say he stays and displays better as just kind of a standalone Magneto, if anything. But giving a flight stand sure adds to things. But with Nightcrawler, see, this is another one where, yes, he comes with fisted hands. Thank you. He also comes with an extra head portrait, which... When looking at the totality of the X-Men 97 line and having a very animated style to it, I don't really feel like this Nightcrawler fits it. Yes, you could say the extra waviness of the hair, sure. When I see the series and I see him in it, perhaps I'll form a different opinion. It's going to be 
Pretty much the exact same Nightcrawler as we've seen before. His tail is not bendy, but it will rotate and largely it's just a very cool wraparound tail. It adds a little bit of a, a motion momentum to an otherwise just kind of standalone figure without powers. Now, articulation, getting him into those acrobatic poses that we know and love for the character of Nightcrawler. If you gave him a flight stand, sure, he definitely comes to life. And for that alone, that will be worth it, especially for those missing a Nightcrawler. But then he has no accessories, nothing of that sort. So if articulation is the only thing you want, by all means, there you go. But how about a Banff cloud? A general poof, a Banff of his brimstone, the little pink blob, something like that really would have put a smile on my face. Like I said, the articulation is more than fine, but he doesn't even have his cutlass. And I know for a fact, because of previews, he has that in the show. So that would have been nice to have. Again, extra hands, head portraits. Sure, thank you. But ultimately, when it comes to a Marvel character with powers and abilities, I'll take those any day over the standard heads and hands. Now, in moving on to Jean Grey, we start to fare a little bit better. Now, in being the second greatest telepath in the whole Marvel Universe, she just comes with a pair of outstretched hands. That's kind of a bummer, right? Now, she does have a head portrait, and I'm going to assume that perhaps she lets her hair down in the new X-Men 97 cartoon, and hence why we get this head portrait. It's very nicely done. She has a beautiful face to her. All the paint is beautifully just put on. It's great. The head portrait does nothing for me. Stretched hands does nothing for me. In some cases, we'll say. The hands, fine. Head portrait, no thank you. This is Jean Grey. This is what I think about. And I would say the costume, the sculpted line work, every little nuance, every little detail is finally there. They have nailed the character of Jean Grey. And for that, awesome. Totally love it. She even has a head portrait that will rock back and forth, and she has the ponytail. And I absolutely love that because it just looks a whole heck of a lot better than prior ones. You even get some articulation in the ponytail, but keep in mind, when you move it around, it's definitely going to flop out every single time. It stays in there until you really start messing around with it. She has plenty of articulation. And... Really well-engineered articulation, although just to keep in mind, and I will say this across the board for all of these figures, heat some of them up in the legs, just as an FYI. She doesn't have anything upper diaphragm, but she has it more in the waist, which gives her enough rotation there, I would say. Thigh, double-jointed elbows, double-jointed knees. She's got it all and then some, but again, go very easy with the knees, the legs in some cases. You may want to heat them up to the point where I'm not gonna lie, it kind of made me nervous moving some of these things. The feet, they go up, down, left, right, rotation. Here's the big deal. Can you guess what I'm gonna say here? She has no powers. And while this stance right here looks great, hand in her head, hand outstretched, doing her whole mind reading, there's no powers, nothing. So it really does leave her lifeless on your X-Men shelf. Now, moving on to Cyclops. Again, as I'll say all day, I really appreciate them finally doing powers. You get an optic blast for Cyclops, and it looks really good. It's one we have seen before, but with this new head portrait, you simply just plug in the eye beam effects, and you get a gene scream sort of deal, or he's just upset. Wolverine has driven him to the edge. But that displays really well, and with the accompanying head to push the visor button, that's a Cyclops that I know and love from X-Men 97, X-Men the Animated Series. Really well done. Now, in terms of the extra head portrait though, with the plug-in effect, now, you can't do anything more with this. It's always gonna be missing that. So the extra piece would have been nice and maybe going forward, how about a removable visor? Let's see more abilities now, more things to do with our figures. We nailed the Cyclops powers. Now, let's see some more oomph. You get extra hands. They're entirely too big. See, it's not just McFarlane Toys that has these problems. Hasbro has them too, obviously with this X-Men 97 line. The hands are morph hands. They're way too big for the body of this Cyclops. Now, the fisted hands were great. You can kind of fudge in the other hands to the point where, okay, I guess that works. But largely, 
This is a very good looking Cyclops. I like that all the bands are sculpted in now. They're not constantly moving around. All the little parts and pieces that he has to his uniform. I like the smirk on his face, the visor. It all has paint. It all looks good. Although I would say I think he suffers from a little bit too long of arms syndrome. But in terms of the head articulation, yes, you will get plenty of it. So I totally dig that. His harness effect, the yellow part, will go all the way down. It has a little bit of paint on there, especially around the X down to his boots. And like I said, I love all the sculpted parts. Nothing is falling off constantly like we've seen with prior Cyclops figures. Now, right here with the yellow harness, I thought, how is this gonna work? It's gonna hinder his ab crunch, right? No. And this is something I really wanna point out because I thought it was really cool. If you look right here, the yellow part is sculpted in, so when you do the ab crunch, it folds in and doesn't hinder the articulation. That is pretty cool. I like that ingenuity. He has butterfly joints, he's got bicep, he's got double jointed elbows, he's got the hands that hold the visor and push the button and do all that great stuff. So you won't have to really worry with this Cyclops. At this point, just heat up the knees, right? That would be my best advice. But in totality, as a Cyclops from X-Men the Animated Series, X-Men 97, he ain't too shabby at all. Now, moving on to some villains. We get Madeline Pryor, the Goblin Queen, and of course she comes with fisted hands, but at least she has paint on them to carry forth her uniform. She also has some ethereal effects or whatever her powers are going to be in this new X-Men 97. So it remains to be seen what she will actually do, but we've seen these effects many times before. They're tired at this point. Let's see something new, but more so I do hope that these are the effects, the colors that you see in the show. Now, you do get a baby. It's all swaddled, it looks adorable, and it's a baby we have seen more than once, enough with the baby. No more babies, at least do a different sculpted baby. We've been babied out. However, for the baby that we are given, I like that he has little X-Men symbols all over the blankets. It's cute, it's adorable, but too much reuse is too much reuse. Let's see some new parts and pieces. Now, with the Goblin Queen herself, it's a pretty standout figure, and one of my most favorite figures from this new wave. She's pretty stellar, except when you get down to her stiletto boots and she becomes kind of back heavy and hard to stand. Her cape is very Batman the Animated Series, very sleek, very sexy, it looks great, and the two-tone with the red paint underneath, even though it has a stamp, numbers, kind of takes away from the Goblin Queen effects, but she gets what she gets, I guess, with that sort of deal. The head portrait is stellar. She looks beautiful, she looks vicious, she looks like a, like a you know what, we'll just say. Now, I like that, yes, her collar does go all the way up. In certain promo photos, it looked like she didn't have the black collar, so I'm happy to say that she definitely does. Down to her brooch, right there on her chest, she looks like a woman, a female action figure woman. Oftentimes, recently, Marvel Legends has become kind of iffy with that, like they don't want to go too far. And in saying going too far, I recommend heating up the legs because my legs do not want to kick out past this endeavor right here. You don't want to break anything, you don't want to snap anything, heat them up. And yes, she's going to be a pain in the butt to stand. That, again, is what I like about McFarlane sometimes with the stands. Stands are incredibly helpful in standing action figures that are incredibly hard to stand much like the Goblin Queen here. She does have a little bit of a pinkish tone to her skin. Again, I hope that that is something we see in X-Men the Animated Series and not something that maybe was kind of goofed a bit. With the baby, with the power effects, with the cape, if you get her to stand and stand she will once a little effort is put in, it's a pretty solid Goblin Queen. Now to move on to the last figure, and my favorite figure of the bunch, because he's new. He's new to the Marvel Legends line, and he just looks really cool looking. Like, again, not to say Batman the Animated Series, but he has that look to him. Not so much the original X-Men the Animated Series, but more so, yes, I guess you would say X-Men 97. The armor is cool. He does have more paint than most, a lot of it is plastic, but I like all his armor pieces. He's got silver, to brown, to his black gloves, to the skin tone, to the orange. He's got his red Boba Fett cape in the back. That's just pretty cool. But you're right in assuming that yes, all of his armor, all of his garbs is very heavy plastic and it's going to significantly hinder his articulation. 
It's not terrible where you can't move him at all, but these are very thick pieces. So getting his legs out, getting him to move, it's going to take a little bit of effort. You can move the legs out. Nothing I had to heat up on this guy, oddly enough, but he does have double jointed knees. And then, of course, all the armor is painted nicely for what paint is there. Let me just say that. But then down to the feet with his boots, swivel up, down, left, right. And for the most part, he does stand pretty well. He could be kind of back heavy with his weapon, but keep in mind with the shoulder pads right here, those will hinder you as well. His big red cape, that will hinder you, especially on this side. It's kind of like you can't really do much with it because it's such a heavier piece of plastic. So you will have to work around it. It's one of those figures that I recommend posing him as best as you can and then sending him in for getting him. That's probably the best option that you got because yes, he is a little bit cumbersome as cool as he is. He's just kind of a pain in the butt sometimes to move around. He doesn't have, let's say an ab crunch, but it's more in the waist, which I would say for a character like this until a better judgment can be said for watching the show. I think that that works, and surprisingly, you get a lot of momentum and articulation out of his domed head, which that totally works for me as well. As far as I'm concerned, in terms of him holding the weapons, that's really what I'm looking for, so that you can really get him in a good position to then take aim, or whatever he wants to do in X-Men 97, towards the X-Men. On the back side, you'll notice this porthole right here, and that's where his accessories will go, and he has full weapon storage, which I love. Now, with the gun itself, it's a very Toy Biz looking gun. I noticed that right off the bat. It has these two little cattle prod looking things, those attach, but the gun itself is very futuristic, very cool, very 90s, and this piece right here, I didn't even know it came off until I set the gun down and it fell off. So just keep in mind, you don't want to lose that if in case it decides to go south. But it looks like one of those guns back in the day where you'd have batteries or some kind of light up effect. And I really wish that it did that. That would have been so cool to see. But you notice it has a peg right there. That's where it will fit in his back. And on this side, it has peg holes for the two cattle prods or whatever you want to call these things. Jousting sticks. <laughs> Remains to be seen. It's stolen tech. That's what the executioner's whole deal is. He steals all kinds of weapons to use against the X-Men. Now, right here on the gun, again, it took me a second. I had to look at the packaging, but it all plugs together. It plugs into his back and bingo, bingo. Yeah, you've got some decent weapon storage, which I totally appreciate. So that is very cool. The one caveat to his weapons, though, is that he doesn't have interchangeable hands. So really only one hand will be able to hold these silver cattle prod looking things. You do get a blaster. It's kind of like a Mega Man blaster, if I could compare it to anything. The paint is not that great. And if we weren't talking about X-Men the Animated Series, I would just assume this is the cap to a pen. It's just kind of lackluster overall. It doesn't have any port, so you could put an effect piece at the tip, and it simply just fits over his arm. Now, Again, I reserve judgment until I see the actual cartoon to see this guy in action. So hopefully it resembles this, but it's kind of a mishigash of different weaponry, which again fits the executioner. And I hope that it fits what we're seeing here in terms of action figure form. So again, to reiterate, this wave two is certainly not as great as wave one, although there are some gems in it, that's for sure. More powers, more effects, more overall accessories to bring these characters to life because head portraits and hands aren't doing it. You see the way Cyclops looks right there, Madeline Pryor, and then of course Executioner, that's cool. Everything else I had to force, I had to give Magneto a stand, I had to bring those other three characters to life because what was in the box did not do it on its own. And when collecting action figures with what little time we have in our lives, you don't want to take it having to augment your toys. However, that being said, with your collections, with these new action figures, you can have some fun on your shelf, that's for sure. Perhaps Sinister and Madeline Pryor, Goblin Queen are in it together to get this baby. Who's the baby? Who knows? Should be fun, hopefully, right? Now, in terms of, again, collecting over the years, Deadpool, Cable, perhaps this baby is Cable, perhaps I'm presenting a time paradox, who knows? But in either case, 
It's a lot of fun. And then in kind of combining characters for, let's say, season four X-Men, the animated series, Sinister, Apocalypse, and now an unmasked Magneto because of combining two action figures from wave one and wave two. I'm very happy with this. My X-Men, the animated series is alive and well in 2024. Even this team up right here. And if you were wondering if you have the prior release Nightcrawler with the Cutlass, with the extra head portraits, everything will fit if you don't like these new X-Men 97 ones. Wolverine, I'm gonna guess, goes up against the Executioner. Hopefully Wolverine can really unleash now in this new series and really slice and dice. That would be cool to see. Spider-Man, man oh man, would that just be a treat for him to pop up in this new season. That would be awesome. And as I've said over and over, I don't want Spider-Man the Animated Series to return. If John Semper Jr. returns, takes the reins, and if you wanna give me a call, yeah, I'd definitely be on board for a new Spider-Man the Animated Series. And speaking of Spider-Man the Animated Series, you might hear a voice change in X-Men 97 because Jennifer Hale, the black cat from Spidey Animated, will be taking over for the voice of Jean Grey, which will be kind of weird, to say the least. I always enjoy the original voice cast, but oftentimes, alas, you have to take what you're given, and if you were wondering why Madeline Pryor is called the Goblin Queen, well, there you go. <laughs> Actually, it's a complicated mess of a storyline. Hopefully X-Men 97 simplifies it. Now, if I was a betting man, I would say that if there was a upcoming wave three of X-Men 97, it would probably look something like this. We really need a full-blown redo of Jubilee. I imagine we'd see a Logan figure, something like that. Beast, while we definitely don't need a new Beast, maybe more towards X-Men 97 would be cool. You're probably gonna see Morph in his new digs, and then perhaps a mystery villain. Who knows? We'll see. Place your bets down below. So, that will wrap it up for my look at the brand new Hasbro's Marvel Legends X-Men 97 Wave 2 action figure line. That was a lot, but that was so much fun. And I'm really hoping, sincerely hoping, that X-Men 97 really does encapsulate everything we loved about the original animated series and updates it and invites new fans, but while keeping with that distinct storyline. It's so simple, and that's what I loved about X-Men, the animated series. It took all those storylines, all the countless issues of comic books and made it easy for someone like me at that age to understand the X-Men. Everything I know about X-Men primarily comes from X-Men, the animated series, and I'm really hoping X-Men 97 adds to that more and more. So for that alone, for everyone to enjoy the series, my fingers are crossed that it's great. And from what I've heard so far, I think we're in good hands. But you've heard my thoughts. Now I'm curious to know yours. Comment below, let me know. Let's talk everything X-Men 97. And I'm going to leave you guys with that. As always, drink some great coffee, eat some great food. But most important, remember, keep an open mind. Don't be negative. Wait till you watch the show. Don't listen to anyone else. Don't listen to me about X-Men 97. Take it upon yourself to watch and form your own opinion. And that is the best thing you can do when watching anything. And when you do, let me know what you found. I'll talk to you guys soon. Adios.